course, let's start with the upcoming album Soles, that it's coming out of uh, August 27th. So let's start with the writing of these songs. Uh, first of all, when uh, were this uh, music written? Um, we started writing the songs in, I guess it was February 2020, but um, we wrote Uncaged Birds um, a year before we started writing the rest of the songs. And we even went to the studio in 2019, in August, I guess, to record only the song, Uncaged Birds, um, which was the first one we ever did in our uh, current lineup. So it was kind of a, we went there to see how things are going and how we work together, how it feels for each of us. And it was great. So then we started writing the other songs uh, half a year later. Okay, and uh, how are you uh, writing new music now as a uh, band after those lineup changes? Uh, usually it's, it happens like this. Um, our both uh, guitarists, um, Konstantin and Valentin, they are like creating the, the groundwork for the song, like creating the instrumentals and everything. And um, yeah, then pass it on to, to our drummer, Dennis um yeah who's adding the drums and yeah making them more human you know because our guitarists they work with with like drum computers and programmed drums and stuff and um yeah in the end um the more or less final instrumental song will get passed over to me and Leila <clears throat> and then we start listening to these songs over and over and um yeah then we just keep uh, recording ideas and what we think what would be cool and um, we also talk about um, what kind of vibe or feeling we have when we are listening to this song so that we get uh, a topic that we can write about and how the song speaks to us and yeah then we usually i i write my my parts on the songs and leila's writing hers because of course she's way better than me in writing clean vocals and catchy hook lines and stuff <laughs> And um, yeah, so this is usually how we work and how we write the songs. But uh, of course, everyone is open here to, to add ideas. If maybe someone has an idea for a clean part or a shout part or something. Yeah, it's really democratic, I'd say. Yeah, you mentioned that some of it was written uh, last year in February. That was just before uh, everything went crazy crazy in the world. So uh, did COVID has, have a effect on this album in the writing or the recording? How did you manage the recordings? Yeah, definitely. Um, actually, we wanted to go to the studio in April, but we had to postpone it to August because of the pandemic. And we were not able to really meet in person um, or to go to the rehearsal rooms. So everybody was recording at home and sending it Maybe we sometimes we had a meeting like this here. Um, yeah, but it was not really that feeling of writing songs together while we are right um, with each other. So I guess it would be would have been different if COVID hasn't been last year. And even the topics of the songs, I guess um, we try to um, try to stay sane while writing and try to put in our emotions into the songs and the lyrics so it was pretty helpful for our mental health to write the songs in this time okay so what are these 10 songs about then um, is there like a team that brings it all together oh uh, yeah i mean it's not really a concept album we'd say, but um, I mean, the main the main topic for this record or what the record is also, especially for us personally, is uh, solace. Because writing this record during these hard times was very important uh, for us, as we every one of us had like, yeah, you know, like something like a light on the end of the tunnel where we can all look forward to and it was like, yeah, the reason to to keep on going and to keep writing songs and preparing everything. Um, 
and all that important stuff. And um, yeah, so in general, I mean, the topics during these songs are a little bit different. It's also about uh, breaking up relationships, um, burning bridges, closing old books, but also starting new chapters, which was pretty much how we felt as a band and as single persons in this band. So um, in general, you could say that that the whole record is has something to do with solace. Um, but yeah, there's no there's a red line going through all these songs, but it's not like one big big special topic that every song is about. And yeah, yeah, talking about the light at the end of the tunnel. How is it to uh, kind of prepare for this uh, important album release when, like, from day to day, we haven't you know really known what's gonna be next. So how has the experience been for you? Now it looks like it's going to be a better in August, but you know, who knows? Yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> we decided from the start that we want to release the album in August, no matter if we, are, if we will be able to play live in this time again or not. So um, it was a, a clear decision for us that we will do this no matter how the world will change. <laughs> um, but we were, yeah, I mean, we were more or less sure that there will be no chance. Right now we are talking actually about maybe a, a release show in our hometown, which would be awesome. But of course it's not, not safe yet. Um, although we already um, confirmed two shows in, uh, in June and July. It's one streaming show, which is at least cool for us as we get like a real, a real band live experience again. Um, of course, without a crowd there, but with a worldwide streaming at this time. Um, but we will. We also have a, a show in Munich, uh, which will be a distance distance show or whatever is it called, uh, where we have like a live audience watching us play, even though they are not allowed, of course, to, to jump around and stuff like this. They have to be seated. But yeah, this is pretty cool for us. And right now it looks promising that uh, maybe things will change soon again but yeah i mean for us it was it was cool because we knew what will how everything will be like that there won't be any live shows or tours during these times so we had uh yeah i mean our our big focus points during the last months were uh, shooting music videos and um, preparing the single releases so yeah we still had a lot to do <laughs> Yeah, you mentioned uh, next month you'll play in the Metal Frenzy streaming festival. So uh, what are your kind of feelings and thoughts on these uh, streaming concerts? Um, yeah, actually, I'm really not a big fan of these streaming concerts and streaming festivals because when COVID started, we got like so many mails and messages about streaming festivals and shows around the world with like uh no budget or anything at all and we should have taken care of the production ourselves and uh you know like delivered the footage to them and they just broadcast it and um so i'm like very skeptical when it comes to these uh streaming stuff but uh, metal friends is a bit different because they have like a real there's like a real location there's a big building with a stage and a big light uh, technique and a solid sound system and everything. So it's like a real, feels like a real show, a real festival because they, they um, yeah, provide us with all the cool stuff that we need. And we just have to move there and play the show and that's it. So um, I think if it's made like this, it's pretty cool um, because it, it keeps uh, a certain quality standard. And um, of course, it's not much work for us to organize everything. We just have to go there and play and have fun. Um, um, but yeah, I know what you what you mean. I mean, there I've seen so many bands and live streaming shows yet that I got a little bit tired of it, and I'm really missing like being on a current concert. But for now, and as we haven't done this yet, I think it's a cool a cool alternative for us to to just play our live our new songs live. And um, yeah, getting back this 
band feeling that we are all missing so much a little bit at least because we will yeah travel together in our band van and yeah have a good time yeah Leila what are your thoughts on performing uh, without audience um I'm a bit nervous about that because a streaming concert is always different uh, to a real concert since there are no people in the crowd and the people are watching this from home and uh, I guess they're not dancing in front of their screens <laughs> and that going into that feeling of being on a concert. So I believe um, when I do a little mistake on stage, <laughs> they will hear it <laughs> and they won't if there would be a big crowd. So that's why I'm a bit nervous, but although it's fine, I'm really looking forward to it. And um, it's a good way for get, to get into that stage feeling before we play the next real show in July. So um, I think it's going to be great. Yeah, let's go uh, back a bit. I guess this is more for Robin. Uh, we already mentioned the lineup changes that you had. So how was it to start building things back up again? after, well, things broke down kind of mid-tour? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it was, of course, uh, a hard a hard month for us in general because, um, yeah, we had a lot of a lot of shows planned and um, we had to, to cancel our, our tour with uh, our Mirage, which we were really looking forward to. But um, after our old singer left, uh, the rest of the boys, we, we had a big talk, what we want to do and where we want to go with everything. And we were like all on the same page and we wanted, we said that we definitely want to continue with this project because um, it's just a very important part of all of our lives. And so we all said, okay, we will definitely keep on going and we will search for a new singer and yeah this is when we when we started reaching out and um so i mean yeah we were it wasn't like i mean of course it was a hard a hard thing for us because we had to to find a new fitting singer which is always a competition or a challenge i'd say but um there was never a point where we were like wow okay this is like a super super hard bummer for us now and hmm, should we maybe break up this was like never an option so um i don't know i think it was like yeah like something of a restart for us which is can be healthy sometimes and i think in, in our case it was uh yeah i think it was maybe necessary and i think we made the best out of it and um, because, yeah, I'm happier than ever before with the current lineup. So um, that's how it how it started. And especially with Leila, we are super happy. And I think she fits, fits perfect in our, in our lineup. <laughs> okay, uh, Leila, how was it for you to join the band? Um, it was very exciting because I never sang in a band like this, in this uh, kind of genre. Um, but I, th I think we liked each other pretty much on a personal level from right from the beginning. So that made it very easy to become a part of the band and of the band family, so to say. And we even played many shows uh, right after I joined them. I, I guess I, I've been into, in the band for one month before the first show and over the summer there were a few festivals and concerts we played and that brought me even closer into the band uh, and the band feeling so it was nice it was good to see the band grow um very fast in these few months yeah yeah i might i mean we I think shortly after you joined, we played two very cool tours um, yeah. with the Amity Affliction and uh, what was the other one? Atreyu. Atreyu, yeah. And um, this was the point for me where where I really, I really realized that this is way better 
than it ever has been before and made me really happy. So yeah, there's also a funny story how how we actually got Leila into the band and where the contact was coming from. Maybe Leila can can uh, tell the story. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I I knew Konstantin um, from a Steel Panther concert where I was on stage and singing, and he was in the crowd recording. Um, my performance my short performance on stage um then we met after the show and i gave him my number to so he can send me the video and yeah that's how we got in contact for the first time and he told me about venues back then but i didn't really recognize them i, I listened to it but it was all i guess once and that's that's it but a few years later i read the posting of venues, I, I guess, on, I think on Facebook, um, that the former singer left and I wrote Constantine a message saying, hey, do you maybe need a new singer? So he invited me to, uh, to a rehearsal and yeah, I went there and we played a whole set right yeah. in, in the first rehearsal. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, because Constantine, when he told us about Leila, he was like, guys, I know a girl met her on a Steel Panther show and we were like, what? This is not really our music. But uh, yeah, then we heard a few uh, few songs and vocals from Lila and then we were like, wow, okay. Let's invite her to the rehearsal and it worked out great. 